Hi, I'm Mark and I'm here with Chris and we're going to help you to sell service design with confidence. If you have no clue what we're doing over here, make sure you check out this first video in this playlist and everything will become clear. So in this video, we're going to actually talk about a real life situation and real life sales challenge that we got from the community. Um, and we're going to do this in the Chris Doe fashion and that is through role play, right Chris? That's right. I'm excited to do this with you, Mark. All right. So let's paint a picture here. Um, you're not. You're going to be the creative, the service designer. I'll I'll play the client in this case. We're okay. at a networking meeting, so um, there is no proposal. It's like a pre getting to know each other stage. And you you're you're trying to explain to me what service design is because you're super passionate about service design. You love it and you think every the whole world should know. I run a small construction business and you think, yeah, a construction business is a service business. So why not? Uh, they might need service design. Um, and let's start at the point where I respond to your initial uh, uh, words. I'm a service designer. That's what I do. Chris, tell me, what is it, what is it that you do again? Mark, I'm a service designer. Essentially, what we try to do is to design the experience for your customers. And this applies to many different things, not just to screens. That's essentially what we do. Wow. In interesting. It, it does sound kind of vague. So you, you do design, you make, you, you make, you make logos. No, we don't make logos per se. We kind of look at the entire journey, the path that a person that is a lead or a prospect comes in contact with your company, how they become interested, aware, and why they engage and and why they purchase and what happens afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. All right. Um, still. Are kinda... you familiar with this concept? Not really. I yeah. I know. I my nephew does design and. Uh... I, I don't really know what services are. We, we, you know, I run a construction business, so it, it's it's kind of kind of abstract to me what you what you were just describing. Sorry. Okay. Do you ever think about uh, how your customers come to find you and why they choose to work with you? Hmm. Well, yeah, not a lot. I'm busy, but yeah, we have we have a marketing guy who does that. So let's let's flip it around, Chris. This was a good attempt, but I know I know you can do better. I think a lot of people recognize the situation. Let's see if mm. we can sort of uh, tweak it and make it less awkward and uh, better for for the service design. All right, we bump into each other. There we go again. So, uh, Chris, uh, good to see you again, man. Um, wh what was it again that you did? Well. Mark, thanks for remembering me in the first place. And I think the approach I took last time, I, 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 I see that you were confused. Let me take a different tact, if you don't mind. Let me yeah, ask sure. you a little bit about the kinds of business goals that you have. What are you trying to accomplish hmm. with your business? Yeah, man, we run a construction business and construction is, is booming right now. So our, our goal is always to serve our clients uh, better. We want more satisfied customers because those are our ambassadors, and um, we want to grow. We need to expand. That's that's basically our, our goal. But I, I thought this was about what you do, right? Yes. And so here's the thing that I know is I can talk all day about me, but I, I think this is to to borrow a quote from Seth Godin. We don't want to get email. We want to get me mail. Only things that are relevant to me. So. I, I think it's beneficial for both of us if I just spend a little bit of time trying to understand what it is that is important to you. So what I heard you say, if yeah. I may play back what you just said, which is you have clients and you want to create more satisfied customers and that's a way that you can grow and expand your business. Did I get that right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for. Perfect. So let me ask you a couple of questions then. Who are these kinds of clients and how do you increase customer satisfaction. Hmm. Yeah, so if I look at our existing client base, there are people living in suburbs, moving to a new house, wanting to make the place 
um, their own. You know, they're looking for a unique style and we want to cater to that. So for us, it's really important that we know who these people are and, and be able to help them fast at a, a decent price that they don't pay premium prices. That's basically our what we try to position ourselves at. And is your business in building custom homes? Is it remodels or is it just about getting them into one of the properties you've developed? Hmm. We do both. And, uh, you know, if you if you ask me what's dear to my heart, I like to develop the new stuff, but the remodeling it's it's a huge business. So but my heart tells me I want to I want to build homes from scratch. Mm, okay, I think that's probably really fun to build something totally custom and unique for the individual, right? And you right. don't have to Absolutely. deal with the existing problems of a, an existing structure. Uh, if you were to look at your business from a a high level, uh, are you familiar with the Pareto principle? Yeah, the eighty twenty something like that, right? Yeah, right. Like where eighty percent of your revenue comes from twenty percent of your efforts. And although you passionately feel great about building new homes, where is the biggest revenue source? Is it in doing remodels, new homes, or something else? Yeah, yeah, it's some remodeling thing for sure. Yeah. Okay, so would it make the most sense to focus right now, even though you don't love it one hundred percent? that it is the biggest driver of revenue for your business? Yeah, probably, probably, you know, okay. it, those are the, the, the tough, tough discussions, but yeah, from a business perspective, that would be the smart move. Mm. Okay. So now when people have options and they can choose you, they can choose your competitors or someone else, what is the biggest driver of how they make their decision? Like, why did they choose you versus your competitor? Hmm. That's a great. That's a great question. I I would hope it's the quality of work we do, but I'm not entirely sure, man. Mm -hmm. And you're not alone in this, in that many of us are busy running our business and trying to provide the best craft and skill and do the work fast, as you mentioned, and also to do it at a competitive price. Not necessarily cheap, but just not not expensive. And so we don't take a lot of time thinking about who our customers are and how we can build a stronger relationship with them. Well, that in a nutshell is what service design is. We take a look at your customers and the customers you'd like to have more of, and we try to design a path so that you can more clearly communicate things that they value so that they're more likely to choose you versus someone else. Let's unpack what just happened here. Okay. Chris, <clears throat> help us out. What was the difference between the first and the second situation? I think the tendency, Mark, is that when somebody asks you a question like, what do you do? Oh, that's my opportunity to talk. And Ooh, what we have we to go. do yeah. is realize that talking about ourselves, unless it's framed within the lens of what's helpful or interesting to the other person, it's really dull and not interesting at all. Hmm. And we know this because when we meet somebody and we're watching people and when two people get together and start engaging with one another, if you really lean in, if you're really listening and you're giving the other person your sole focus and attention, they feel really special. They feel important. They feel heard. And then rapport and trust can be built. But if the opposite happens, which is I'm just talking about myself, like, aren't I so great? Like, check out these projects. I've won these awards. Then you just become a know-it-all and someone who brags a lot. And we know how we feel about those kind of people. We're not really connected to them. So the first thing that we should do is to resist the temptation of taking on a question and just talking all the time. You need to know this, that if you can just talk less and ask more questions, you will have a better chance of understanding the problem. Here's the thing. The client has a goal in their mind, but it's not clear to them in their mind just yet. And what we have to do is ask questions to help them surface what the real problem and their goals are so that we can think, how might I best solve this problem? Yeah, and, and you you can have a few questions that lead up to or relate to the thing you're doing. Like when you ask, do you know how your customers you know, find you? Do you know what they value about you? Those are all things that sort of link where you can make the connection with what you do, right? You can have those questions in your mind. Yes, and some people would refer to these as Socratic questions. If mm. you're a fan of Chris Voss, who wrote the book, Never Split the Difference, he calls them calibrated questions. They're usually questions that start with what or how. 
How do customers pick you? What is it that you're trying to do? What are the challenges that you face in your business? What are what is your ultimate goal? Makes a lot of sense. So the general advice, I guess, when when a client tells you, you know, it's it's vague, it's abstract, I don't I don't really get it, would be not to explain more, but to ask more questions. Have yeah, I summarized I that? The, yeah. Yes, you have. I think in the first scenario, we already got off to a really bad start because I've already been too busy talking <laughs> about myself, right? That's not a good way to talk. Now, if you had only an elevator ride up, the, the elevator pitch, you won't have the time to ask all these kinds of questions. So what do you do if you're in a situation like that? Somebody leans over, it's like, oh, that's interesting. What do you do? What are you doing at this conference? And you know you have a 30 second ride up. The framework that you wanna use there is you wanna say, do you know this problem? Da, 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 da. That's what I help people solve. So you just identify the problem. Do you know how um, co companies oftentimes don't understand why customers leave them for another competitor or why they even pick them in the first place? They're like, yeah. Well, that's what I help clients understand. Exactly. Bing, the door yeah, opens. Exactly. Should we exchange information or not? Yeah. All right. Let me, let me know, let us know in the comments if you've ever encountered such a situation, just type yes, or is this familiar? We'd love to know. And uh, let us know if we need to elaborate on this. Um, in the next video, because we have got a few more coming, we're going to talk about the situation where a client is reluctant or hesitant to uh, engage with you in the discovery stage, in the research stage, because they already know what their clients want, right? So they, they know who their customers are. Why should they do research? You're going to hear how Chris handles that situation. If you're interested in that, click this video over here and we'll see you over there.